Well, it's, it's that too, but it's the fact that like you have to literally watch like two or three shows to understand the new Marvels movie. They're even doing it, like people are complaining about Gen V. Like the the boys are going to be set. I think uh, Gen V just went off the air. Their season finale. The boys are set to be like two days after the events that happened at the school. So you would have to watch Gen V to understand the first episode of the boys' first this, they, they uh, have current season. Fucked that show all to hell. No, they, really they have. They it's have. Fine. It's all. I just the... rewatched the the original boys, and it's fine. If if you can if you can get past their obvious pandering, simper, simper, it's, it's simper, fine. simper. I've I've you read. Listen to yourself. I've read all twelve volumes of the comic books. The story that is supposed to take place in the boys, they cannot do. They have completely eliminated any possibility of them actually doing the story that they purchased. That's why the, the yeah. show is so fucked. I mean, like. Bullshit, like, ideology, messaging, bullshit aside, I don't care. Fuck it. It's always been doing that shit for a hundred years. The only thing Eric Kripke did was make it make the references more relevant. That's all he did. Yeah. It's still way left. It's still one side. It's just he made it, like, supernatural-esque where it was like, oh, we have all these pop culture references. Woo! As the stupid shit's going on around us. That's all he did. And he but, upped the fucking insanity with the, the dicks blowing up and the, the fight <laughs> scenes and shit. Did they, they have... Like, I don't, I don't mind some of the choices they've made, but other choices they've made have completely cut off any possibility that they could actually tell the story that people signed on to when they, the show began. Yeah, true. Like, there's no way well, they can do it. Well, but... How are you, you supposed know, to I end mean... up with Homelander, his clone, and fucking uh, uh, Billy the Butcher in the goddamn Oval Office breaking each other's faces like how are you supposed to do that now <laughs> yeah they made black know, noir actually them. black <laughs> and they don't yeah, even they show him because his, his like face no they is all, showed like, him they, they show him one time in a flashback right before yeah. right as uh right as uh uh the captain america guy was coming out of russia they showed a flashback to where he didn't want to wear his helmet anymore and so he told him he was taking off his helmet and then he got his face all burned and mangled and so that's why he never takes his help. Yeah, and his brain's all mush, and he's like, he's seeing cartoons and shit. Like, how am I supposed to be afraid of this guy when he's, like, living in cartoon land? <laughs> See, like, I, I, I wouldn't have mind the whole, like, oh, he's a black guy if it was a uh, a bait and switch, right? Like, so you, you make everybody think that he's a black guy, and then you just find out later it is Homelander's clone, but he's been in blackface the whole time. Like he just he's wearing somebody else's face. No, he's just he's just like he puts on black makeup so that when he's gonna like you know show his face in public, like he does it on purpose to like throw people off the scent. No, yeah, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because like, uh... then you could have been like, holy shit, Homer did blackface. <laughs> Which fits with the show and that character, just to it was just to fuck with people, absolute one hundred percent. But no, they gave him a he was a black guy with a nut allergy who he got his fucking stomach punched in. Yeah, it's like, retarded. I guess nobody can kill Homelander. I guess it's got to be a female that eventually takes him down. I mean, and like, big picture shit aside, I'm still pissed off that we never got a Red Wings scene. That was like my favorite scene in the whole fucking comic. It's, it was so simple, hilarious, and disgusting all at once, which is like the epitome of the boys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, Simper? Um, I know what you're talking about in regards to the violence in the show, but I don't know what you're talking about when it comes to the comics. I never read. The talking about the hockey team, you idiot. No, 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 no. Do you, do you know what Red Wings are? <laughs> I, I, I know. I, didn't read the I, I think I know what the concept of Red Wings. It's are. when you eat a girl out on her period. Yes, that's okay? that's what I would. Well, assume you it know, is. blonde chick, right? And Huey, they're uh -huh. like living together in the comic book at this point, and uh, Butcher is coming to fetch Huey. Well, Huey and uh, blonde chick, who's Starlight, are getting it on, right? Stark, he goes down on her, and then Billy Butcher comes knocking at the door while you know Huey's. Hey, does she have a super period? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't realize what's going on, or he didn't realize that he he, he was like he just thought it was you know. Uh, you can't taste blood. Some some fluids. <laughs> I guess not. I guess he didn't. What the fuck? But he, he he runs to the like he puts on some pants and runs to the door really quickly. You know, Starlight pulls the cover over, and uh, uh, Billy the Butcher's like. It's, to talk, telling him about, oh yeah, we need to be here, here, and that part, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, and by the way, uh, congratulations on like, getting your red wings. And he's like, what? And he just goes, and like Huey <laughs> runs to the bathroom and just sees he's covered in blood. Just, oh just god, just damn covered it! Covered in it. She didn't bother to tell him. How do you not know at that point? Don't does he have like superpowers yeah, too? Blood has a very has distinct strength. smell and taste. Dude, that, that's another thing that they they. 
they totally fucked up the opportunity of in the show was the initial shock of Huey getting his powers for the first time. Because, like, they're literally on the way to go stop a teenage super team from being a bunch of shitheads. And they give him an injection of Compound V, like, in the arm, like, in the van, on the way. And they're like, we don't know what's going to be. So uh, when you feel something strange, you know, let us know. What are, what are his powers in the comic book? Yeah, they all just have super strength, more or less. He doesn't, he doesn't have, have teleportation, teleportation in the comic. Mm-mm. No, he he. Uh, so the first time he, he he finds that he has super strength, there's a bunch of like you know teenage superheroes running around him. They're all degenerates, and one of them runs up and is like gonna try to fuck with them, and he goes to punch the kid in the stomach and instead punctures his entire body with his fist. And he has he has like a fifteen year old like superhero stuck on his arm and he can't get him off. <laughs> like he's okay, like... so the so the TV translation to that was when he was in Russia and he went up and punched the guy and went through his stomach and he was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. But it was funnier because he was like literally shaking his arm and there's like a punch. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much better. And they fucked up Love Sausage. That that shit pissed me off. Love Sausage Love- was like a Russian Superman with a giant dick. It wasn't a, yeah, the, his dick, dick didn't like turn into, Yeah, no, it, it didn't do that shit. It was just a giant dick. That was it. He was just a, like a fat, older Russian dude that had a big red suit with the, the, the hammer and sickle on it. And he has a big beard. And you just, <laughs> like the, 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 what do you call it, the splash page of him? You just see the outline of his dick down to like his knee. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it, what, he didn't use it like a fucking snake no, monster? No, they completely, it's like he just like, Saw like a picture of the character, like okay, I got it from there. It's I don't he think Eric Kripke read the comics at all. He didn't use it as a telescope to check to see who's at the door before he opens it. No, no, it it wasn't like posable like that. It was just a, he was just essentially a superhero, like a super strong could fly guy. That was it. Now he can bounce like Tigger. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> see what I did. See what I did. <laughs> Like, there's so many things they just, like, small things they fucked up. Not just the overarching story. There's just so many small things they fucked up about that that were amazing in the comic book and would have made the show a hundred times better. See, I learned from The Walking Dead that you don't read the comic if you want to watch the TV show. Oh, speaking of which, did you watch, um, have you watched the latest episodes of Fear the Walking Dead? I didn't know there were latest No, I didn't know they were released. Yeah, they are bad. Oh, Oh, my God, they are bad. Let's just say, I'll say this. The, the gay dude's back. Back and, again. Oh, it's super fun. They spend the whole first episode of him saying that he's not that the guy that he is, like denying his name. No, I'm Dante. I'm like, he's got a family and somehow a white child. Is this Inferno the STD he got from a guy? <laughs> that would be so much better and more realistic. <laughs> Inferno, Dante, or whatever the hell his name is, is the alter ego he created right after you know he tried to kill everybody when he was the bad guy in the last season. That's but no, he found this German heard. town somehow in America. And now he's uh he's a leader over there, and he's got a white child. It, dude, it's bonkers. It's such. Well, bad they shit. killed off anybody that was halfway decent on that show, or they just left. Dude, I stopped watching around the dam. I didn't care. But I'll watch it. It's been showing up on my thing. But every time I go to, it's it's uh, it, it. There's not a new episode. It's like episode eighty one, eighty two, and eighty four, something like that. And no, those they, are all they have a new episode out. tonight. Uh, they they're on episode three. Let's, let's just say, oh God. It, Besides that episode, they had to bring back uh, a guy that clearly died around, like, season two as the villain this year. And it's just like, Jesus. And they brought back a character they killed off. That death means nothing in this fucking universe. And neither does, like, head injuries. Nothing means anything. And they, they brought back an old villain, and they brought back somebody that clearly died, like, a year ago. Or, like, ten years ago. What's going on? What is that? A flowing title, a flowing title. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't, don't know what I, what I don't know, don't know what, what they're, they're talking about. about. Wow, he does know how to change scrolls. Oh, look at you, double scrolling it. So let's say they brought back a character that clearly died just to kill them off in one episode. It's so fucking annoying and predictable. It's like, God damn it. All this to lead up to we're the ones that live. The... Fucking Rick Grimes and Michonne story. <laughs> Who asked for that? Are they making that a TV show now? Is that what they're doing? I thought they, they were absolutely supposed to have like two are. or three movies. No, it's they're doing a TV, it as a TV show. show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And Walking Dead never died. They just turned into smaller fucking entities. No, no, no. They're the fracture, it's like the same hydro. amount. So, so look at the airtime. It's the same amount. You got three different shows, right? You got you got Daryl, 
you've got uh you've got the uh New York City one and then you've got Michonne and and Rick, right? <laughs> that's it. They're they're all six episodes. So that so if you uh that's 18 episodes total. The historical uh uh Walking Dead's were 18 episodes. So what they're doing is they're having the one Walking Dead show, but historical? they're splitting it into three shows like they did when it was uh they'd spend like three episodes on Hilltop and then three episodes on Alexandra and then three episodes on Oceanside. And so it was all a small group of people that were their stars that they would do like six episodes throughout a season. They've just broken it up into three different shows so they could run the 18 episodes year round and they only have to carry two writers in the room. The only thing I'm uh, relieved about is this this is the last season of Fear the Walking Dead. I honestly didn't know that show was still going. <laughs> I didn't either. I'm just I'm I'm this far into it, man. It's just like right. I have fuzzy memories going. of all these shows and I just yeah. stopped giving Stop. a shit when the show got bad, which was like halfway through season two. No, they they've rebooted that show like three different times and it's running. I like, like the okay, first we're season. gonna kill off all the main characters and 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 start over, and then they go, Oh, well, we're gonna do a time jump and kill all the characters and start over. And then they go, okay, we're going to kill off all the main characters and start over for the last couple of seasons. Yeah, those were new. They did everything. They did time jumps, nukes. They did fucking everything. OB and says, Till, why are you such a Fear the Walking Dead nerd? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, But the first season, they had that Mexican dude that was supposed to be the main character. And at the end of that season, they're like, nah. We're gonna change things. Is it the one they throw out of a plane? First, or, the first season was good. I liked the first season. It was kind of cool to see uh, the actual fall of society. I guess you'd say. But after yeah. that, I just stopped caring. Like I don't care about them. But, like they should just been. It should have been that one season and done. If you just watch the first season of Fear the Walking Dead and you don't go any further than that, it's a it's a decent show. Well, the second reboot, and I and I know I know he hated the time jump, but. The second reboot brought us the gunslinger that was the trick shooter in the in the <laughs> the old west uh, novelty town and that was like my favorite character hands down and then he's like I don't want to do the show anymore so they killed him off. Yeah, it's I that, don't know that's it, the thing everybody wants to leave that. the show. It's they, they and they kill him off it's like they go completely against their character. Like the 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 one kid, oh, I forget his Nick. Like he didn't want to do the show anymore. Last name Gur. <laughs> oh, that that would have been a better show. <laughs> <laughs> but they, he's like, "Hey, can you just just write me off?" Like, I think he's supposed to be the main character, and they they killed off the mom uh, in the same season, and they didn't know he wanted to be written off, so they wanted the, the future to be the two kids, I guess, the daughter and the son, Nick and Alicia, and. <laughs> The guy who's like, oh, you know, I don't want to do this show anymore. Can you just write me off? So they just had to depend on the the gay black dude and the girl. And the guy, that, the the Mexican guy that they killed, I think they already killed him like twice. He had a headshot. He was shot in the fucking head. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm the, fine. The, the, the old Mexican dude. And he survived. And then, and, then he got, yes. and then he got dementia, and then he stopped having dementia. <laughs> oh, in this season? Dude, in this season, no dementia. He's fine. He's like, Yeah, he's completely fine. It's the way they treat mental illness, I miss head Warrior. injuries. Dude, I miss so Warrior, a show where it was mostly kung fu and the little bit of gay shit they put in there. They they elegantly edit it so you could just skip past it and not even notice it was there. Like like with the boys, season one was great. Season two was dog shit. Yup. Season three was a little better. Still had some major problems. Although I did love it when A Train grabbed that dude and just ran and just grinded his face <laughs> off in the ground. That was pretty great. And then he got his heart. Yeah, that was like okay, that's that's a nice little bit. You you did some other shit in here that I really hated. Um, they fucking ruined Hero Gasm. Why would you? Hero Gasm was literally in the comic, was a reference to Epstein Island. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, they can't show that on TV. <laughs> it was an island where all the superheroes well, would go, and they'd bring in hookers of questionable ages, and they would do drugs laced with compound beans, so they get fucked out by all the superheroes. Well, and and for for all its faults of the woke, you know, nonsense that's in it, and trying to address each issue of its time the one thing i really like about that show is they do a damn good job of showing how depraved famous people are and hollywood people yeah but they get people lost in it so bad like the the comic like they spent a lot of time laying that groundwork but it was it was more about like the, the sexual depravity was more of like pedestrian when it came to a lot of the superheroes it was more about like people like homelander who literally just let an entire plane of people just die I was like, nah, fuck him. Let's get out of here. 
boom, <laughs> dead. 9-11, right there. Like, that was more of the point. was like, yeah, the sexual depravity is one thing, but it's more of like a signifier of, like, what these people actually are. But there's a ton are. of times in that show where they show they don't give a shit about people. Yeah, I mean, but I'm just, I was just saying in relation to that, but, like, they kind of get lost in it. They just they just want to, like, oh, here's a new way for someone. Oh, he ran up a guy's pee hole and, like, is <laughs> doing this inside, and, and then it sneezes and, and explodes. Sneezed. What <laughs> did that add scene, to though. the fucking episode? It doesn't matter. It was a great scene. It was a terrible <laughs> no, scene. No, it wasn't. What the fuck? It terrible. was a great scene. It's a terrible scene. I like, no, then, I like how people had on just... the... They add on to it with Gen V where he comes there and after they're trying to save everybody, he's like, oh, you're trying to kill your own race? Like, the whole end of that episode is them, um, all the people, all the brown people were trying to protect people and all the white people were trying to kill everybody. Yeah, but J Seth Rogen's involved in it, so you know it's going to have all that shit in there. Well, so I'm he's surprised Palestinians didn't get bring in, brought into either of these shows yet. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, bro the, bo uh, the boys haven't, like, come out yet so we'll just wait and see <laughs> well that, that was that was that was one of my favorite parts of season three was when uh was when uh captain america came back and he's sitting there trying to understand how it's possible that afghanistan is the bad guy <laughs> he could not understand how afghanistan was the bad guy because when he died they were fighting the russians and they were helping the afghanistan oh, yeah. <laughs> afghanistani people or afghan people or whatever you call them yeah soldier boy was kind of a nice little addition but he, I don't think he came into the comic until way later. And they, they never brought in... Um, there's like a, a guy that's like the keeper of the lore in the comics. He, he's like a... He looks like Larry King, but like two foot tall. And he has like an old comic book store that he's like constantly chain smoking in. And like he keeps basically all the real files of everything that happens. Like all the missions and stuff. And the comic books are like their way of rewriting their history. Like being like, oh no, we actually were the good guys in this situation. See, it said in the comic book. <laughs> like there was cool see, things they reality, did in the, in the comics that, in the comic book of the boys that they just, they just ignore in the show and they replace it with a bunch of fucking just political bullshit that no one gives a but fuck I, about. Well, I, then that's the thing is I, I think that the, whoever, the person who wrote the comics had great character development. So they have solid characters but I think the writers of the show are dog shit because if you go line by line through that show and watch it and you consider that time period, everything is reflecting what the mainstream of the time period was. Like even, even when Leah Remini was going after the, the Scientology people, mm -hmm. then they had that whole arc. And he even said, they're calling me the Leah Remini of, of uh, uh, that specific cult. And it was like, really, you're going to, like, everything, they basically yeah, took whatever was in the headlines and shoved it into the show, and it's, that's just yeah. shitty writing. It's way too top. Like, the boys is way too, like, Eric Krimke seems to be that just that guy. Just like, whatever's he's happened in the headlines. He's a pop headline. culture, yeah. He's a pop culture. And it, it dates your shit really quickly. It yeah. it makes the rewatchability, like, very low. Where where the comic seems to be character-driven, his yeah. is all uh, pop culture, gore, and degeneracy. Spruce like, Goose is right. They need more Butcher's Dog. Yes, terror. Like, the fact <laughs> they did not add terror into the boys constantly well, pissing off. Him. They did add him. He was just kind of a uh, an emotional support dog when he bailed and went to his, uh, his uh, I guess, sister-in-law's house or something, or his aunt's house. Mm -hmm. That's where they were keeping the dog, and so the dog was in, like, two episodes. But, but it was terror, like an emotional support. Terror dog. also has compound V. Well, maybe he'll show up in season four. He like Butcher would literally tell the dog, grab him by the nuts, and the dog would grab a dude by the nuts and like pick him up. I would like that. That would be awesome. It was he was the coolest fuck and he had giant fucking balls, which were always hilarious in the comic because they would just like randomly show him like walking away with with uh but your next time you just see these giant balls dangling between his legs. <laughs> I do, I do like, I do like the special effect they have that looks like it's popping a balloon with blood and guts in it. I do like that. Yeah. 